Hello, I would like to uh, explain on how to write, uh, I would like to explain how to write conference proposals. Um, so there's a separate video on finding conferences. Um, and um, so please watch that. And once you have found a conference and um, the call for proposals, you have to read the call for proposals. Um, in detail, so pay attention to the details. One of the very important things is to consider the audience of the conference. So for example, if this is a College Music Society conference, then the audience um, comes from very different backgrounds. So there may be uh, music scholars from musicology or from music theory or ethnomusicology. There, uh, there would be music education specialists, there would be performers, composers, um, so many different backgrounds, people with many different backgrounds come together. That means uh, that the review board who reviews the proposals will of course consider um, that your proposal is suitable for such a diverse audience. So if it's such a general audience and you're proposing uh, to analyze in very detail, maybe the voice leading or harmonic progressions of a particular piece, uh, they may not um, find it very appealing for this audience. But if you send that kind of proposal to a music theory conference, uh, it would be very appealing because the audience would find it very appealing. So it's very important to keep in mind the audience. Uh, now most proposals are will be reviewed blind, so you have to follow the directions on how to uh, submit the proposal. Nowadays there are lots of online uh, submission systems where you just paste in the title of your proposal and the abstract and then some other information like whether uh, what kind of technology you need um, and so on. So they usually do a blind review, which means that the reviewers will not see your name, right? So now if you have published or uh, gave, given presentations on that topic before, and they can simply Google it, they will find who submitted this proposal. Uh, so it's not totally blind. Of course, somebody specializes on a topic, then um, they, they, they will give several presentations uh, related to the topic. Of course, the emphasis will change, but um, so it's not totally blind, even if it's uh, officially blind. Um, but it also means that you can cannot mention your name or should avoid uh, referencing yourself in, in the proposal. Anyway, so you need a descriptive, um, appealing title for your conference presentation. Uh, so this is an example that one of my former students wrote uh, for a poster proposal. And that was for the College Music Society, uh, the South Central chapter, so a regional chapter. So anyways, usually there's uh, some background information at the beginning. So despite being a standard piece of bassoon literature and despite being recorded several times, Paul Hindemith's Concerto for Trumpet, Bassoon and Strings received very little scholarly attention. By the way, those details like including years uh, for compositions or even dates of living for people is quite important. So I always uh, recommend it. Um, so already this sentence gives a little bit of background information or it says, well, uh, here the, uh, the paper will be on this piece by Hindemith and the title says that too. Um, and But despite this being a standard piece, which is background information, um, it received very little scholarly attention. And already here uh, is some originality, the emphasis of the originality in the proposal. Um, then you also need to reference other literature. That means other scholars who have written or spoken about uh, your topic need to be referenced in in some as a summary. So it says here two dissertations that to discuss this work focus specifically on the trumpet part, and there are references, and those two uh, references are listed in the reference. By the way, there's usually 
a word limit. Word limits are very important for proposals and you need to read the call for proposals carefully. Uh, in most of the cases, uh, the references need to be included in the word limit. Only if it specifically says that re uh, reference lists or bibliography can be in addition, um, then, uh, then you can go, uh, you, can, you can max out your word limit with your abstract, which is this, and then have the references in addition. I think for this proposal, the references needed to be included as part of the word count. Um, so, but the references are important. So if there are relatively few words rec um, as, or as a maximum, like 250 words, you may not be able to include references at all, but you should still make a reference of scholarly literature in your actual abstract as author date reference, even if you can't include the references because um, the word limit is uh, too low or uh, too strict. So, but no scholarly writings uh, or writing investigates the use of the bassoon in this work. Again, uh, uh, pointing out shortcomings of existing research. And then it says this poster with the intent to further analytical research of wind literature, literature serving the performer and here's a target audience, right? We'll display an analysis of the use of the bassoon in Paul Hindemith's concerto for trumpet bassoon and strings. The poster will furthermore examine the stylistic and performance practices which should be taken into consideration when discussing and performing bassoon music composed by Paul Hindemith. Uh, this music distances itself from traditional music approaches seen before the 20th century. It does not cross the line to atonality so that it gives a little bit of stylistic background here um, for at least for those who don't know much about Hindemith or this particular piece uh, and, and can make it more appealing this way. Thus Hindemith's contribution to music in the 20th century is known for its expansion of tonal harmony, which influences the use of the solo instruments. Um, to fully understand and execute Hindemith's work for bassoon and trumpet, examining his use of consonants and dissonance is of utmost importance. His pairing of trumpet and bassoon will be analyzed, including how these two instruments uh, communicate with each other. So it basically discusses what does what will the poster show. If it's uh, for uh, a paper, um, then it should be similar. You need to say what uh, will you present when you're presenting your paper uh, or if, if it's a lecture recital the same way and of course it needs to say somewhere then what exactly will you be performing but for the lecture part what are you discussing and what is your original contribution right it uh, should also say or at least imply uh, the research method Right. In this case, it is analytical and it is quite clear. It's not uh, um, explicitly stated, but it's quite uh, clearly um, implied. Right. So anyways, that says this poster will provide some background information in bullet points as well as summaries and visualizations of the analytical findings. So if somebody has never uh, seen a poster, uh, you may want to Google some posters online to see it, but it has to be visual. There cannot be just text all over the poster. Um, and the sentence makes it clear so that um, the reviewers will understand, okay, this proposer knows actually what, uh, how a poster should look like, right? Um, let me show another uh, conference proposal. I actually wrote this um, for a conference and it was accepted. So the, the, this one was accepted as well. So both are examples that were actually accepted and subsequently uh, presented at, conf at the conference. So um, the musical language of black minstrel music by Jacob J. Sawyer, right? So now most people don't know Jacob J. Sawyer. He's a kind of forgotten composer. I, I rediscovered him recently. <clears throat> and so I wanted to point out, well, this is black minstrel music, meaning it's not minstrel music composed by white composers, and there's lots of, <clears throat> but he is an African-American. And uh, in fact, I believe I say that somewhere 
uh, in the abstract as well, pointing out, okay, this is African-American composer working with African-Americans. So anyways, the inclusion of one of Sawyer's compositions in James Trotter's famous book, Music on Some Highly Musical People, Boston 1880, marked Sawyer still in his early 20s at that time as an exemplary and well-known composer. This is the background information about Sawyer. Um, so I'm writing this. I need to consider that those who read my proposal are not specialists. I cannot expect that they know Sawyer since he is a little known or forgotten composer. Uh, so I need to give some background information. Uh, anyways, his early death from tuberculosis let him sink into oblivion. Uh, as reported at previous conferences, the author of this poster uh, recently discovered uh, Sawyer's numerous records that provide biographical information and information about Sawyer's work as a musician and composer who collaborated with some of the most famous African-American musicians of his time, specifically with minstrelsy groups, and then I list them, right? Uh, so why did I say as reported at previous conferences? Uh, because if somebody would just Google Jacob J. Sawyer, they will see my work and they will see uh, some articles I wrote and some conference papers I presented on him. And I want to be open about this, although uh, it, it is obviously clear if they now Google this, they will know who uh, wrote this. And so it's not kind, it's not really blind anymore, but I wanted to be forthcoming with this because I didn't want them to think or I didn't want them to search Jacob Sawyer, find that there have been conference presentations given about this, and then they think, oh, this has been done, we're rejecting this proposal, right? So I wanted to be forthcoming about this. Anyways, the vast majority of Sawyer's compositions were written for these ensembles, which performed primarily minstrel shows, vocal and instrumental music, dance, and comedy. So it explains on what minstrel shows are for those who don't know. Um, Thus, Sawyer is a pioneer of black minstrel music, uh, music composed by an African-American for African-American minstrel groups, which were not common before the Civil War. Uh, obviously, uh, this is after the Civil War, but um, anyways, uh, this poster will, for the first time, and here I point out the originality uh, of, uh, of my presentation, present harmonic and melodic analyses because what I had presented prior to this um, is basically on the rediscovery process and uh, the biography, um, but this presentation will specifically present harmonic and melodic analyses of Sawyer's minstrel music, specifically providing analytical score of his composition, I'm the Captain of the Black Cadets for voice and piano from 1881 in which the lyrics are supported by the rhythmic and melodic design. So this is some of the findings, analytical findings. As many other of Sawyer's, as many other of Sawyer's compositions, his otherwise simple entertainment music is built on an intriguingly creative harmonic language. Again, this is analytical findings that is characterized by the use of common tune diminished seventh chords, augmented six chords, added note chords, and a walking bass which we normally associate with music um, that comes much later, right? Um, popular music, uh, jazz, and so on. So this is kind of intriguing. So uh, you have to include some of the findings. And here's already a dilemma. The dilemma is that very often when we propose a conference presentation, that uh, the conference may take place six months later or sometimes a year later and we have to propose this now, right now i may not have written this paper or made or done this poster to propose this um, now in this case i had actually done the research prior to it but for many other proposals i submitted before i actually hadn't written that paper yet uh, then of course you can't really list some of your findings you can maybe imply some of it or we can uh, say uh, say some more details on what this f uh, will focus on uh, but that's that's kind of a dilemma so ideally you have completed the project uh, you have your research findings and um, and you can point out your research findings in the proposal so and the last thing i want to discuss is how is the poster or uh, 
paper or whatever proposal, the conference proposal, different than uh, a paper proposal or research proposal. Well, when you write a paper proposal or research proposal, maybe for a course you are taking, then you're proposing a future research project and it will read like this right and you're also including a timeline for your research well um, for a conference proposal uh, you're basically even if you haven't written that conference paper yet but it should be written as if this project is completed so you cannot say I want to find something or I want to analyze um, but you would write uh, this paper will present an analysis of right uh, and even if you haven't done this yet you're not lying when you say this paper or this poster will present an analysis of this piece right um, so focus on what the paper or poster or whatever presentation uh, will focus on so uh, make it as scholarly looking as possible with references if possible well there is no other secondary literature on jacob sawyer except the one published by me uh, and i didn't want to list it um, but i the only reference i have here is within the text so not as a separate um, bibliography and i uh, because that was the only one item that i could add i inserted it in into the actual proposal into the abstract uh, and not as a bibliography and I also had to watch out for the word limit so anyways um, I hope you will uh, choose a conference write a conference proposal and submit a conference proposal um, ask before you submit it ask many uh, many people to read it and to give some feedback on it if you have not written many or any conference proposals before so anyways enjoy bye